This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on his keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-breaking, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. In fact, nothing brought a smile to Stanley's face quite like the sound of a keyboard. In these moments where Stanley could be safe and secluded in his office, merrily typing away, life was perfect. Here, in this place, Stanley is safe, protected from the outside world and all of its negativity. While completing his daily tasks, Stanley felt no anxiety or stress. No depression weighed him down. By fulfilling his assigned role within the company, Stanley felt whole. As though he was at peace with the world and all its various idiosyncrasies. While Stanley was here, typing away the tap, tap, tap of the keyboard, Stanley felt a sense of relief, of relaxation, washing through his entire being. Whereas other people might consider this annoying or hard work, Stanley fought nothing better than sitting at his desk, merrily tap, tap, tapping away. Today was a very special day that presented Stanley with an interesting challenge. What that challenge was to be, Stanley yet did not know. The bosses upstairs had planned something for all of their employees, employee 427 in particular. The boffins down in IT had introduced a new program into the computer system. Stanley would spend the day learning how to process, integrate, and input the new streams of information. Look at him go. Writing, reading, deciphering, all of the determined grace of employee of the month. Maybe even employee of the year. That accomplishment would make Stanley very, very happy.
the green text on the black background filled Stanley with peace and serenity. Green just so happened to be one of Stanley's most favourite colours, and black always made him feel focused. The colour black always seemed to bring Stanley back to a place of beginnings, a firm grounded point in which to start any venture. The random streams of code may have seemed confusing to many others, and indeed, even myself. But to Stanley, it was as familiar as the back of his own hand. Stanley navigated the new program with ease. So far, although it was new and inventive, Stanley found he had no particular problems in acclimatizing to the new subroutines that were set before him. While employee 427 enjoyed typing, and indeed he was very good at it, he is only human, and every now and again he liked to pause the program, allowing him to stretch his hands, work out the muscles in his fingers, not forgetting his palms, or even his knuckles. Yes, every so often he liked to take a break, in order that he can maintain his physical stature, massaging his hands, kneading his skin and muscles and sinew in order that he may maintain his peak, in order to satisfy his own personal interpretation of what his prime stature should be. Taking into account all he knew of self-physical maintenance, Stanley always liked to maintain himself in any way possible, whether physically or mentally. Health has always been Stanley's top priority. If he is not in a position to help himself, then how could he possibly help other people? And helping other people is what Stanley believed he could accomplish by working hard at his job. Oh, careful Stanley, you nearly missed a keystroke there. If Stanley missed as even one particular digit, who knows what might happen? Perhaps all the bananas will suddenly turn blue all at the same time. Maybe the printer will start printing pictures of monkeys. Perhaps all the memos would be deleted, plunging the company into chaos. We wouldn't want that now, would we, Stanley?
Very good, Stanley. Those decimal points won't tap themselves. Reels and reels and reels and reels and reels of information flashed across Stanley's eyes. Stanley considered himself so competent at this job that, even while processing all the information, he could ponder other things, more interesting things, like last night's dinner and how there were some left over. A couple of delicious morsels tucked safely away in a Tupperware in his fridge, in his kitchen, in his home, waiting to be eaten for him at the end of the workday. And then, quite suddenly, something very peculiar happened. The program paused all by itself. This had never happened to Stanley before. He was not accustomed to having his progress halted by malfunctioning software. Whether the system had a bug or was simply updating, Stanley did not consider himself in a position to tell. Maybe the bosses upstairs had decided to install more new software during the day and Stanley simply missed the memo. Stanley, or rather employee 427, always keen to observe the rules and morals of the company, knew that he should not interfere with the program in play. Yet, he could not help testing his own mental stratagems. Stratagems? Was that really the right word, Stanley? No. Mental fortitude, shall we say. Mental dexterity, even, may be better for the situation at hand. Stanley couldn't help but test his mental dexterity in attempting to get the program to continue on his own personal computer. He tried a keystroke, and then another keystroke, and another, and another. He went so far as to attempt a couple of different keystrokes, even so daring as to try combinations of different keys in certain orders, in attempt to unfreeze the screen before him. And yet, no matter how many combinations Stanley tried, and tried, and tried, it was all to no avail. Are you done yet, Stanley? No, 
nice. Stanley is indeed determined. I don't think it's going to work, Stanley. After trying for so long, Stanley decided to stop and let the program run its course. I said, after attempting all he knew, Stanley decided to stop interfering with things he didn't understand and let the program run its course. Stanley is very, very stubborn. and doesn't quite know when to give in. You're fighting against the system now, Stanley. He's fighting against the program, even his better judgement, and also the narrator. His stubbornness is to be commended, for fighting against these things is not something easily done. Yet, Stanley continues to defy the laws of physics and parameters of his world, despite all this. Stanley is very, very stubborn. With nothing better to do, Stanley decided to reward himself for all his hard work with a break and treat himself to one of his favourite drinks, a warm, refreshing mug of hot chocolate. Doesn't that sound wonderful, Stanley? Off you pop. This is the company break room on Stanley's floor of the big building in which he works. Stanley had to consider that the break room was nowhere near as comfortable as his nice, silent seclusion of his office. And yet, he had no choice but to embark to its destination in order to satisfy his thirst, or indeed, his hunger. This is the company kettle. Look at it. Look how shiny and round it is. As far as kettles go, I have to say, this is one of the more remarkable kettles I have ever seen. If you've seen any better kettles, well, I dare you to suggest them. I doubt anyone has ever seen a more remarkable kettle as the one currently in Stanley's hand. I doubt even you 
could think or suggest or comment on an even more spectacular kettle such as this one. Stanley didn't think anything particular about this kettle, but then again, Stanley didn't think particularly much about anything, apart from his job, which we all must admit Stanley is very good at. Stanley waited patiently for the kettle to boil. Once the kettle had completed the task for which it was built, Stanley decided to add the freshly boiled water into his favourite mug. This is Stanley's favourite mug. The girl on the front is Alice in Wonderland, one of Stanley's favourite books. Stanley spends many an afternoon lost in his imagination and in the wonderful world of reading. When Stanley saw this mug in an old china shop, he could not help but feel an affinity for the crockery and purchased it forthwith. Since then he has taken it everywhere he goes, always ever ready for a warm beverage. When Stanley poured the hot water into the mug, steam rose joyfully from the bottom. Stanley loved chocolate in all of its forms, whether it was warm hot chocolate, dark chocolate, even white chocolate took his fancy.
That's right, Stanley. Don't pour too much. We don't want to overflow, now do we? Mmm, a nice warm mug of hot chocolate. Doesn't that smell delicious, Stanley? Once the hot water had been added, it was time to stir the hot chocolate into the added liquid. Stanley always enjoyed the act of stirring. Such a simple, repetitive task put him at ease and seemed to wash away all the daily stresses that had burdened him since the morning. You stir that hot chocolate good now, Stanley. We don't want any powder drifting on the bottom. Are you, are you finished, Stanley? Nope, nope, he's still going. That's right, Stanley, you stir that mug like that mug has never been stirred before. You can do it, Stanley. That's right, stay positive. You will have that hot chocolate, and it will be the best drink you have ever had. The hot chocolate now adequately stirred, Stanley returned with the mug back to the safety and seclusion and serenity of his office. Room 427. Back in his office, Stanley found that the computer was still hard at work, attempting to complete any task it was currently undertaking. Stanley still couldn't figure out what the computer was doing, but hoped that the computer itself would be able to figure it out. With nothing better to do, Stanley sat down in his chair, rested his elbows on the table, and started to sip off his hot chocolate. Mmm, isn't that wonderful, Stanley? Mmm, yes. The warm liquid inside his mouth, coursing down his throat into his body, filling him with warmth, spreading from his center out through his entire being, relaxing his muscles, easing the tension he often held in his shoulders. Yes, with every sip, Stanley felt more and more content with his place in the world. Stanley found that whenever something was not quite right, nothing would solve the problem quicker than a hot chocolate. He was amazed that politicians had not yet tried this tactic. He felt that if more people in government partook of hot chocolate, the world would be a happier place where people would smile all the time, and flowers would bloom all throughout the year, even in the coldest of winters. Even though these assumptions had no basis in fact, this is what Stanley believed, and he believed it with firm and vigour. Another sip, another dream. Another wave of positivity emanating throughout his person. This really was one remarkable mug of hot, hot chocolate.
Stanley was not entirely accustomed to having absolutely nothing to do. His warm beverage all but completely finished, he found himself tapping away at his mug in place of the keyboard, hoping that it would fulfil him in the same manner. What do you think, Stanley? Is tapping away at the mug fulfilling? I have to say, the sound certainly puts me at ease. Do you feel that, Stanley? A tingling sensation, starting at the base of your spine, travelling down your back, and perhaps tingling outwards, down your arms, along your ribcage, down through your legs, all throughout your body to the tips of your toes. Do you feel it, Stanley? No? Probably just me, then. Time marched ever onward, and the programme had still not yet completed its task. In a wave of confusion and uncertainty, Stanley decided that it wasn't his place to worry about this program, and that it was more than capable of running its own course. The end of the day drawing near, Stanley decided that he was going to go on an adventure. Stanley? Stanley, wait, where are you going? Stanley? Stanley! Well, now what are we going to do? We can't have any action without a protagonist. Without Stanley, my whole role in this world seems rather superfluous. I'm all alone. With nothing to comment on, I have nothing to do. Wait a moment. What about you? Yes, you'd make a perfect Stanley. How about it? I think you'd be a superb Stanley. I used to have an aunt called Stanley, and she was just as good as the one we've been watching. How about it? It's very easy. I'll talk you through it. First, make yourself comfortable. Now, close your eyes. Now, Stanley was sat in his office. He was relaxing. A wave of euphoria spread through his being. Stanley took a deep breath in and out and in and out and with every breath you feel yourself relaxing more and more your body easing of all that unnecessary tension. You become so relaxed, you feel yourself drift on a wave of pleasure. Sleep 
slowly coming over you. And imagine yourself in your favourite place. A beach. Yes, a beach is very relaxing. Your toes digging into the cool sand while you bask in the warm glare of the sun. Listen. You can hear it now, can't you? The waves lavishly washing along the shoreline. The whistle of the wind lapping at the water. The warm sun beating its rays down upon you. Yes, this is peace. This is real serenity. The salt sea air cleaning out your lungs with every breath. Stanley loved the beach. Stanley felt at peace and at ease. Stanley slowly drifted off to sleep in his place of happiness and contentment. And Stanley had a very good rest.